Well, I hope that you guys are ready for some real poker once again, because we are finally headed back to the casino. Downstream poker room is opening back up, so we're gonna go down there and get in the action. First thing we gotta do is check the oil in the old car since we're about to drive two hours total and time to get on the road. We're really excited. Been forever since we played in a real casino, so time to get after it. Let's go, guys. Okay guys, so we're playing 1-3 in this session, buying it for $500, let's go ahead and jump into some hands. First hand we're going to go over, I look down at ace-queen suited for middle position, it's one of the earliest hands in the session, so I'm starting off about $500. It's a button straddle pot, so it's going to be $6 to go. The big blind limps, I go ahead and make it $20 once the action gets to me. The button folds and the big blind makes the call. So we're off to see a flop. That was a pretty insane one for us. Right off the bat here, we are flopping trips. So. Yep, <laughs> big blind checks. I go ahead and lead out for 25 here. I think there's some benefit to checking back, but it is a uh, two heart board and I have no hearts. So I don't know, but I bet out 25 and unfortunately we see a fold. So we take down our first hand, but it's not for nearly as much as you're hoping for when you flop trips. A little bit later on, we look down at 4-3 suited from the hijack, starting this hand off with about 490. It's a straddle pot once again. There are several limbs to me and I make it 20 to go. Well, guys, nobody's too worried about that because we end up going six freaking ways to the flop. So extremely multi-way to the flop, which comes out a very interesting one for us. Flop is queen, eight, five with the eight and five of spades. So we flop a flush draw here, but not a whole ton else to go with it in this extremely multi-way pot. Action ends up checking all the way to me in the hijack. I fire out $75. Action gets the under the gun plus one player who just rips it in for $300. I think about this for a little bit. I don't think they are, there are too many good options for me here. I don't think I can call. Uh, maybe if they had just raised, I could call. I still don't really think so. I don't love it. I think I'm gonna be against a bigger flush draw or a set a lot of the time. And maybe the best case scenario is a weird two pair. So I decided to make the fold. Maybe I shouldn't have bet 75. Maybe I should just waited. Although that could end up me getting flush over flushed or something like that so yeah i don't really know really weird spot uh probably just fold four three pre um but yeah oh well uh let me know what you guys think of how i played that hand uh what you think i should have done uh obviously folding pre-flop is a very valid uh answer to that question so on to the next one a good while later we've been card dead for quite a while I look down at ace king of hearts, so here comes an ace king hand. I'm under the gun, starting this hand off with about 360. The button straddles for $6, the small blind calls, and the big blind calls. I go ahead and make it $30. I think I should make it much bigger than this, especially when it turns out we get six freaking callers, guys, going insanely multi-way to this flop. Luckily for us, it comes down a pretty good flop. The flop is ace queen four with two spades. Action ends up checking to me, so I've got top pair, top kicker here. I lead out for $75 into all these players, and weirdly enough, we get folds all the way around. So we just take this one down, nice size pot, to be honest, like especially since we just get we don't get any streets of value. So yeah, we take that one down and we're fine with it. Anytime we can escape from an ace king hand without losing a ton of money, it's good. So yeah, oh well, take it down. A little while later, we watch a hand go down between a uh, very well-known regular that we've played against. It's the guy that we won the massive hand against uh, with ace-king against ace-queen when he flopped two pair, or ace-queen against ace-king when he flopped two pair. Anyway, he wins a very large pot from a, a young player who shoves on him on the river, and uh, then at, once he's shown ace-queen by Krusty, uh, asks whether or not, why he didn't three-bet pre-flop. That player has no three bets in his range except for aces and kings. Period. End of story. I've watched him flat ace king tons of times. I've watched him flat queens tons of times. So that doesn't become relevant in this hand that we're going to go over, but the hand after this becomes very relevant. So I look down at ace king suited once again. 
in the big blind, starting the sand off with around $500. It's under the gun straddle pot, under the gun plus one calls, middle position one calls, cutoff calls. I go ahead and make it 35, which I think is not nearly big enough. I think I need to make it like 50 or 55 or something like that. The big blind calls, it folds in middle position one, who now raises it up to 125. So pretty weird spot to get a uh, check raised here. I don't really know what I should be doing. Um, I think there's some case to be made for just folding here. Um, people don't usually check raise light pre-flop, especially in 1-3. Like it always means a very nutted hand. I decide that I can't fold just yet. I go ahead and make the call and the big blind tank folds. So we are off to see a flop, which comes down. 10 10 6 so uh pretty much complete whiff for us there is one spade on the flop middle position one doesn't make us uh, have to make any really tough decisions he just rips it in for 225 dollars i think i can just safely fold here i'm not going to be getting exploited very often maybe there's some chance he'll super occasionally have ace king i really don't think there's any chance though not with this particular player so we end up making the fold much later on when the player was racking up and getting ready to leave, I was like, hey man, what did you have on that hand where you check raised me and then ripped it in on the flop? And uh, he very convincingly told me that he had kings. So I'm very confident that we made the right play there. No regrets about folding, just regrets about losing a big ace king hand. later we look down at the best hand ever created we look down at two red aces from under the gun plus one we're playing seven handed right now there are a few players away from the table we're starting this hand off with about 450 dollars in front of us under the gun player opens to 15 dollars time to load up a three bet i go kind of a bigger size to 65 dollars um it folds to the under the gun player and he snap calls just like insta calls so this is the young player that got wrecked in that hand against crusty earlier and was talking about three betting ranges. So I think he actually has some idea what kind of hands he should be three betting and what kind of hands I'm gonna be three betting. So not feeling like we need to be worried about like weird off the wall hands here. I think he's gonna have like a semi-normal range. The flop comes down king, queen, 10 with two hearts. So I do have the ace of hearts, which is great. Other than that, I think that's a flop that's gonna connect with him a lot of the time. He's gonna have ace, king, he's gonna have ace, queen. I think there's a decent chance um, that we can just be like ha like crushing his value range here. He can definitely have ace jack mm, sometimes. Probably not a ton of the time. I don't think he's gonna be calling a ton of four bets with ace jack, but he'd probably be calling some. And obviously he can have uh, tens, but there's no way that he wouldn't be uh, trying to rip it in with kings or queens. So I'm not worried about the sets that would have beat me. He checks, so that makes me feel pretty good. I bet out 110 and he shoves all in for on us for $300. So that was pretty weird. Not really what I expected to happen. I don't think there's too much I can do here except for make the call though, given all the thought process that I just gave you guys before. So we make the call, time to go to a turn, which comes down the queen of clubs. So not our favorite card. If he had ace queen, he's now beating us. Um, other than that, it shouldn't be too bad. River comes down the ace of spades. So we know we're good now. We flip over our hand and we're good. He mucks. Uh, he didn't get upset or seem real weirded out. I had flipped over my aces uh, before. He did not flip over his hand, so I don't know what he had. But it, the way he reacted didn't make me think that he was ahead at any point in this hand. So pretty sure I got it in against ace-king here. That would definitely be my guess. So we'll definitely take it down. Feeling great about this one. Huge pot. We're running it up. So not too much later, we look down at ace nine of diamonds from the cutoff, starting this hand off with about 840 after winning that nice pot with aces. We're still playing seven handed. The action folds to me in the cutoff. I go ahead and make it $15 and small blind and the big blind both make the call. So we're off to see a flop, which comes down a very good one for us. The flop is queen nine five with two diamonds. So we flop middle pair with the nut flush draw. Very strong spot to be in. Action checks to me, which I would expect it to do very, very often. I go ahead and bet out $35 and the small blind hits us with a little bit of surprise. He raises it up to 145. Now this is a player that I've played against a lot in the home games. Um, he's younger, a little bit on the aggressive side, but not too much. I definitely think he could be doing this with a flush draw or he could, he has check raises as bluffs in his range for sure. Um, so yeah, not really sure what he could have, what he's going to have here, but I have an amazing hand. 
He had bet out 145, leaving himself about 250 behind. I decide this is a spot we're just going to go ahead and apply maximum pressure, get the money in. We know we're going to be drawing super live. I shove all in, and we get some bad news when he snap calls. So that means he has to have pretty much a set or some weird two pair. I could definitely see him having queen nine or nine five or something like that. Well, the turn comes down, not a diamond, and the river comes down, also a blank. So we flip our hand over, and he shows us pocket fives for a flopped bottom set. So unfortunately, we can't hold in what would have been a really big, what was a really big pot. Um, yeah, I'm not unhappy with how we played it. I think we need to do that almost all the time, especially against this player type. Um, yeah, too bad we couldn't find a diamond. It sucks, though, to have our stack knocked back down after we were doing so well. Um, yeah, oh well, on to the next one, I suppose. In the next one, we look down at pocket tens from the small blind. We're starting this hand off about $380, and we're playing eight-handed right now. It's a button straddle pot, once again. I go ahead and open up to $20, uh, being the first one to act pre-flop. After the, with a button straddle. The under the gun player calls and the under the gun plus one player also makes the call. The flop comes down ace high with two clubs. So not our favorite flop, but not that bad. And we especially have tons of aces in our range. I go ahead and bet out $35 and the under the gun player calls. So not too happy to see a call, but I definitely think there's plenty of cards out there, or plenty of hands out there that we can be getting value from. Um, sixes, threes, straight draws all kinds of stuff, uh, middling pocket pairs. Turn comes down the five of clubs. That's not our favorite card. I'm not really sure why we bet out on this card, but we sure enough do. We bet out for $50 and we get some good news when the under the gun player makes the fold. So we'll go ahead and take that one down. I'm not sure my line here really makes a ton of sense. Uh, can't argue with the results obviously, but I think it's okay, especially when he can have like, you know, nines through twos really. Um, and any set would have let us know on an ace high flop that they had a set. So anyway, take that one down, feel pretty good. So after a little while, we've been a little bit card dead once again. We look down at ace jack offseat from the cutoff, starting this hand off with about $450. The button straddles, once again, we played a lot of one three six in this session. The small line and the big line limp. I, once the action gets to me, I lead out for $20, which is not enough. I think I should make it like 30 or 35 maybe. Um, both of the blinds make the call. So we're going to be in position for this hand, which is great. Flop comes down a pretty weird one. Flop is 994, so obviously not our favorite flop. Um, the action checks through. I don't think there's a lot of value for me to be uh, betting on this, especially they're going to have all the nines in their range. I'm going to have like no nines in my range. So, well, not, actually, that's not true. Not no nines, but less nines than them. Um, anyway, action checks through. Turn comes down the king of clubs. It checks me once again. This time I lead out for $40, and we get some good news when both players make the fold. So obviously I'm gonna have king, queen, king, jack, ace, king, all kinds of kings in my range here. So definitely makes sense for me to represent this card. So I go ahead and take it down, and we're building a little bit of momentum. After that, I look down at 7 6 suited from the cutoff, starting this hand off with about $430. The button straddles once again, and we're playing six handed in this, uh, this particular hand. Small blind, big blind, and under the gun all make the call. Hijack raises up to $30. So I definitely think I can go ahead and make the call here in what's clearly going to be a very bloated pot pre flop. Um, I've got a hand that plays great multi way, so time to make the call. The small blind calls and the big blind calls. So, off to see a flop, which comes down a pretty weird one. The flop is 10-10-7 with the one club. So, I don't really know um, how I'm feeling about this particular flop. Uh, some, a lot of people are going to mi have missed. Obviously, there's a lot of 10s in people's ranges. Kind of a weird spot. The action checks to the hijack, who bets out for 35. I decide that this is a pretty good time where I can go ahead and check raise, represent the 10. The hijack is not going to have a ton of 10s in his uh, raising range here, I don't think. So I can definitely try and use some aggression to take this one down. So I raise it up to 115. Unfortunately, the big blind wakes up and makes, a call, makes the call. Now this is a player I also have a ton of history with. I know as soon as she makes the call, there's no way that she doesn't have a 10. She's not calling this with anything except for a 10. Like, she has a freaking 10. 
The hijack folds, so the person we were targeting with this move, it totally worked against, but unfortunately, the big blind woke up with a hand. Uh, yeah, really sucks. Turn comes down the ace of diamonds, and the big blind doesn't think about it at all and just rips it in for like 300 effective. Um, I just fold, obviously. And uh, sure enough, she shows us a 10. So we were right. There's no way she was making this move without a 10. Um, yeah, sucks to make a, what looked like a very good move and have it not work out because somebody wakes up with a hand. Oh, well. So a little while later, uh, not too long, I don't believe, I looked down at Ace of Hearts, Queen of Spades, under the gun, starting this handle of around $300. So we only have $300 left after out of our $500 buy-in. Not a great spot. I go ahead and open up to $15 in a non-straddle pot and get three callers, including the big blind. The flop comes down, a pretty interesting one for us. It's King Queen 5 Rainbow. So we flop middle pair here, top middle pair top kicker, so can't be too upset about that. Action checks to me. I think I can kind of go for value here. Cautiously, um, I bet out for $35, only the big blind makes the call. The turn comes down a five and action checks through. I definitely think it's okay for me to pot control a little bit here. Obviously I don't have top pair, so I don't wanna be going super nuts. And uh, it shows a little bit of weakness, true, but I don't think it's terrible to pot control a little bit here. River comes down a five and the big blind gives us a little bit of a surprise by leading out for $50. Now, I don't think this line makes very much sense. Obviously, we have a triple pair, or we have three of a kind on the board right now. Um, yeah, I don't know. So what I decide to do is think this out for a while, decide that this bet from him does not make any sense at all. I slide in the call, and he flips over jack 10. So we are good. Um, I don't think we could raise here. Obviously, we could be against a king a decent amount of the time, so... I think making the call is definitely good. Very happy with my thought process on that hand, even if I didn't explain it very well. And we take that one down. A little while later, I look down at Ace Queen suited this time from the hijack, starting the hand off with about $420, and we're playing six handed in this hand with no straddle currently on. Um, yeah, just a lot of people were away from the table. There are three limpers to me. I open it up to $20 from the hijack. Small blind calls, and the big blind raises to $63. Kind of a weird spot. Um, I go ahead and make the call, and the small line calls also, so we're looking at a fairly bloated pot uh, going to the flop. The flop comes down a pretty good one for us. It's queen high rainbow with no clubs at all. So the no club part sucks, but the top pair top kicker is great. So the small line checks, the big line checks. I go ahead and bet out $100. The small line folds and the big blind makes the call. So I don't think we need to be too scared. I think there's a decent amount that the big blind can be floating with here. I think ace king makes up a ton of that range. Um, yeah, so maybe jacks or tens possibly, but I don't really think so. Turn comes down a nine. Um, not the best card for us, but there's gonna be no nines in their three betting range. So I don't think we need to be too worried about that. I go ahead and lead out for a very, very big sizing of all in. I don't like this at all. It's a weird spot with my stack to pot ratio, obviously, but I'm never gonna get called by worse here, I don't think, unless Jax like really gets super sticky. Uh, he makes the fold, so we take it down. We don't get punished for our uh, questionable bet sizing here, but oh well, not too sad to take this one down. Just, uh, yeah, I don't know. Don't like that bet sizing on the river. You guys can let me know what you think about that. Obviously, it's a very weird stack size uh, situation and with the pot being bloated with that other player that was in it and all that stuff. So anyway, we take it down. On to the next one. So after a little while, we won a couple of like middling hands that weren't very exciting. Uh, flop top pair, bet one street or two streets and take it down. Uh, stuff like that. So we have built the stack up to $800. Feeling pretty good about ourselves. When we look down at Jack 10 of diamonds from middle position two, starting this hand off with about $800. Under the Gun, who is a super active player that I have literally years of history with, opens up to $15. I make the call. I think about raising here, but I've also been thinking about leaving for a while, so I'm not necessarily trying to play a huge pot and donk off all my profit here at what looks like it's going to be the end of the session. The button and the big line also call, so we're in a fairly decent sized pot heading to the flop, which is a very interesting one for us. Flop is queen nine three with one with three of diamonds. So we flop open ended on a very connected board. Um, I mean, maybe not very connected, but a fairly connected board. Kind of an interesting spot. Under the gun leads out as I would expect him to do almost all the time for $50. I don't think I have a whole lot of options here except for to call. I could raise, maybe I don't hate raising here, um, but I don't know, seems weird. I don't know why I don't like raising. I really don't know. 
um, I call them, and both of the other players in the pot fold. So we are going heads up to the turn, which is another interesting card. The turn comes down the eight of clubs. So we complete our straight, but the front door flush draw comes in. I definitely think that our opponent can have all the flush draws. However, we can also have a lot of flush draws here. So it's a pretty weird spot. Under the gun checks to me, I think I miss an opportunity here. I think I should bet. Um, I think if he's got a big hand like ace queen with the ace of clubs or something like that, or if he's got like king jack or king queen with the king of clubs or something like that, I can get a lot of value from him on this card. But unfortunately, I check back. So the action checks through. River comes down a weird, weird, weird card. River is a two of clubs. So now we got four clubs on board. Once he checks to us, I don't think we can really do too much. If we bet, we're leaving ourselves very open to get check raised. Um, and if we bet, if we bet, what are we really like targeting? Like he's not going to call us with a worse hand, so he's only going to call us if he has a club. So he checks. I go ahead and check back, flip my hand over, and somehow I'm good. He doesn't have a club, so our straight holds up despite there being four clubs on the board. We've got a nice little pile of chips. Time to go to a cash out montage. It's been a long time since we've got a winning session, so time to win some chips and some money before we get to the outro. Well guys, in for 500, out for 900 and something. Crazy day, played a ton of hands, was super car dead for a large portion of the day. We will take it though, holy crap. Late evening, come back. Good to be in a real casino again. Uh, heading to the car, got that long hour, hour and 15 minute drive home, but it's all worth it if you have a solid winning session. We got some birds going crazy out here. Why do we always have birds going nuts in all of our videos? Anyway. If you like this one, don't forget, hit that like button, check and see if you're subscribed. We're all the way up over 1,200 subscribers, still need ideas on what to do for a giveaway, so hit me with those. Have a good one. See you next time.